Hey guys, welcome back to Cryptlord Devlog number one. If you hadn't already, I suggest checking out Cryptlord Devlog number zero. It will give a little more background on the game. Anyways, let's just hop straight into it. The biggest thing I've been working on this time is the temple. Previously, the temple was functional, but there wasn't a lot to it. You would drop your items into the pool and you click this little button and then it would sacrifice them to get reverence points, which you could use to increase your skills. The player spending so much time at the temple and returning to it, I wanted it to feel really immersive and just be a non-annoying place to go to. I've worked on the actual process or ritual of the sacrifice quite a bit. A common trick that's used in games is to just slightly increase the pitch of a sound effect, usually like when you're collecting something like gold coins or whatever seems to activate that caveman part of your brain for collecting many berries or something. I added this effect to each item that gets exploded before it's sacrificed, as well as gaining the sacrifice point itself. So let's try before and after. Feels a lot better, doesn't it? Adding all of these lights and effects that occur during the sacrifice is actually pretty easy. I didn't have to do any additional coding by taking advantage of Unity's component system and Unity events. I'd previously created a bunch of simple scripts that tap into these systems. They all run off this very basic lerping class, which performs some action over time. For example, I have a script that changes the light intensity according to a curve so I can turn it on or off. There's another one that changes the material color over time which is used to make the eyes of the statue fade in. And finally, the flame particle on the brazier is simply just scaled up and down. I added a ton of these ancestral urns to the side of the temple. I eventually plan to make a Kickstarter for the game, and I really like the idea of having a Kickstarter tier being able to have your name in the game, which will display when you activate one of these urns, and it'll probably say something about the character's life and whatnot. It'll be a challenge to keep it lore friendly, but I think it'll be really cool. I threw together a simple tool in about three minutes to just quickly place all these urns around, and it'll make it super simple to associate dialogue with them later, as I talked about before. I always make tools like this to make my life just a little bit easier. You know, you gotta work smarter, not harder. If you can automate something in less time it takes to do the task, then I say go ahead and do it, because chances are you're gonna do that task again. At the bottom of the temple, I added a blacksmith. Once the players reach a certain amount of reverence points gained over the lifetime of their playthrough, they can upgrade their weapons to the next tier here. Writing long dialogue sequences can get pretty messy, by the way. Lastly, I made a 3D icon for the temple on the low map, just to help it stand out from the other dungeons a little better. Another thing I worked on was I added these floating text damage counters. By equipping different runes, the players can make their weapons do different types of damage, and under different circumstances, like doing fire damage during the day and ice damage at night. So this new system where it shows the damage type you just did makes it immediately understandable to them. The last thing I'll show for this video is the work I did on the mini-map. Previously, it would just show the entire map the moment you got in the dungeon, but now you have to discover it. The system's pretty simple, it just shoots raycasts into the world and then converts those positions hit by the raycast into a tile position. And if that tile position matches up with an actual tile, as these dungeons are made of 3D tiles essentially, then it'll show it on the minimap once you look at it. This helps really solidify exploration in the game, as I have a tendency to make um, uh, extremely linear one path dungeons, of course. Anyways, that's all for this video. Join the Discord to get involved with the game, help shape its development, and access early builds. I'll catch you in the next devlog. Until then, have a good one.